The Sky Peer Review Part 3, Episodes 169 to 173. Gone Fall explains the intricacies of the impact dial. The dial absorbs the impact and then you can expel it at your enemy. Similarly, there's this thing called the reject dial, which expels 10 times the amount of impact you put into it. It can be very dangerous for the user, so generally people don't use them. Then he explains mantra. Basically, it's like the force. Priests can feel all the way through the upper yard, while Enel can feel all the way through Skypea. No one knows where it comes from, or why certain people have it stronger than other people. Meanwhile, Enel is sitting on his throne trying to predict how many people will be killed. There's Enel, three priests, 20 Shandian warriors, 50 enforcers, and 7 blue sea dwellers. That's a total of 81 people. Enel predicts that after three hours, only five people will be left. Meanwhile, the Shandian warriors are captured by Shura's ordeal of string, but not Wiper. He explodes from the trees and starts battling with Shura, and he uses a reject dial, defeating Shura. Kamakiri warns him that if he uses the reject dial again, he'll definitely be killed. But Wiper doesn't care, and he plans to use the reject dial on Enel. The Shandian warriors decide to all split up so they won't all get stuck in the same trap again. Wiper pretty quickly meets up with Luffy and challenges him to a battle for pretty much no reason. Meanwhile, Brahm of the Shandian Warriors meets up with Zoro, who's still very lost. Zoro is at a serious disadvantage in this battle because he can't use dials, he can't use waivers, and he doesn't have a range attack. Luckily, he's been practicing this range attack since apparently you can do that with swords now. Just go with it. He gets himself shot, but he does successfully defeat Bram. Hooray! On a less exciting note, Enel has electrocuted and murdered Sanji. Huh? Oh wait, Usopp just reported that incorrectly. Sanji's alive, he's just very badly burned. Then Enel electrocutes Usopp too. Nami stays quiet, so she's not attacked as well. After all, Enel only came by to taunt Gonfall. He reveals that the only reason he took over the Upper Yard is so that he could find the City of Gold. But Gonfall and the rest of the Skypeans don't even know what gold is. Anyway, see ya! Meanwhile, Wiper versus Luffy. Since bullets don't affect Luffy, Wiper uses fire. The clash of the bazookas! Then a giant snake comes by and interrupts the fight. Wiper hangs out for a few seconds, and then he's like, Why am I doing this again? Oh right, no reason at all. He leaves to go fight Enel. Meanwhile, another Shandian warrior named Genbo is fighting the enforcers who look like goats. Then he fights the boss enforcer named Yama and gets himself killed. Yama then comes across Robin, who's doing research. A fight will probably ensue. Later. Meanwhile, priest Geidatsu finds Chopper. Thankfully, he's an idiot, so Chopper has a chance of winning. Chopper has this crystallizing moment where he decides that he is going to be brave and strong from now on. And he defeats Gidatsu. Yes! Meanwhile, Luffy is lost in some strange cave. Meanwhile, Asa is heading towards the upper yard on a waiver. It breaks down, but thankfully she's picked up by Konus and her father, who are also heading to the upper yard. They want to find the Mugiwara crew and guide them back to the Blue Sea. Using Asa's mantra ability, they seek out the ship. Meanwhile, Kamakiri meets up with Enel. Since Enel's an asshole, he gives Kamakiri five minutes to do whatever he wants. Enel promises not to move, attack, or even defend himself. Meanwhile, Satori's enforcer clones, Hotori and Kotori, appear on the Going Merry. They want revenge for Satori's defeat. They purposely attack the unconscious Usopp and Sanji. So Nami and Gonfall must defend the ship and their crewmates. Gonfall is a badass and he defeats one of them. Nami puts on Gonfall's gauntlet with the built-in impact dial and defeats another one of them. She's also a badass. Gonfall puts on the rest of his armor, leaving the gauntlet with Nami and says he's going to go fight Enel. Just then, Konus and the others arrive. They offer Nami a way out of the upper yard, but they have to meet up with the rest of the crew first. Meanwhile, Luffy is still trapped in some strange cave. Meanwhile, Kamakiri stabs Enel through the head. Hooray! Oh wait, it didn't work. Nothing will work because Enel is made out of electricity, similarly to how Crocodile was made out of sand and Smoker is made out of smoke. So even if Wiper uses the reject dial and kills himself in the process, it's not gonna kill Enel. Kamakiri's five minutes are up! Enel attacks Kamakiri and electrocutes him, and I care this time! Sad face. He also electrocutes everyone who happened to be touching the Milky Road at the time. Two hours in, of the original 81, only 25 remain. 
And that's where part three ends. Big events? Hey, we got another new opening. Since I skipped a bunch of filler arcs, it feels like we just got the one that we're losing right now, but it's actually been around for a while. All in all, I'm torn. Because I've been forced into actually liking the Shandians because they're so cool. And of course I like the movie Wire Crew, but they're fighting each other. And it's like, I don't want Zoro to get shot, but I also don't want that guy to be killed. I wish they would take a minute and try to figure out who's the bad guy before they go all willy-nilly killing each other. All right, I can finally talk about Enel. He's even worse than I could predict. Oh, but I love to hate him. He possesses all of the qualities that I desperately wanted Crocodile to have. His disrespect towards human life reminds me of Arlong. I think he may have already dethroned Arlong as the best bad guy. Even though Anel is definitely human, I can tell in his mind he's elevated himself to that of a god. He has begun to believe his own delusion, and that's amazing. There's no beating around the bush. This guy is evil to his very core. Crocodile sat there behind a big table for a really long time, but Anel gets right to it. Murdering likable characters, doing his own dirty work to make sure it gets done, and straight up calling this a game rather than just implying it. I find myself crushing on you now. He's an awesome bad guy. I'm thrilled. And let's talk about Wiper. In part two, a lot of people came to Wiper's defense when I said I didn't think he was necessary in this arc. And let me clarify that I don't dislike Wiper, I just think we could do without his storyline. And at this point, I've gotten to know him and his men more, so I do care about him. I think he was initially thrust upon us and all this stuff was happening and I was like, uh, who are they? Do I care? I, I don't. But now I care. Sort of. I think it's interesting that Wiper seems almost excited to die for his cause. He's so ready to be the martyr that he doesn't see any other option. And he certainly didn't let anyone else in on his plans. They all seemed pretty surprised when he whipped out the reject dial. However, I felt like his random decision to start a battle with Luffy was kind of stupid. Luffy was walking away and obviously not posing any threat to Wiper's mission, but Wiper actually pursued him to initiate a time-wasting endeavor. Wiper is so incredibly fixed on his mission to defeat Enel that I thought that this random diversion was a little misplaced. And maybe that's why it ended so abruptly. And now Robin. We got a two-second glimpse into her character. She's obsessed with ruins and archaeology that she seems to value history above her own life. We have seen this in the past. When the Potoglyph in Alabasta was being destroyed, she decided that she might as well just die. So it's no surprise to me that that attitude carries on to this situation as well. And what does this say about her character? Every decision she makes is an extreme one, that's for sure. Joining Baroque Works, joining the movie Wire Crew, etc. She doesn't half-ass anything. She's fully committed to everything she does, regardless of how insane it is. I like that. Predictions. Everyone else has gotten their own little fight. Zoro versus Bram, Luffy versus Wiper, Chopper versus Gedatsu, Nami versus the stupid idiots. So Robin has to get a fight too. Also, I don't think Luffy's in a cave. He's probably inside that giant sea monster that interrupted his fight. And Sanji and Usopp will get back up soon. They won't stay down for long. If people can be healed from a stab through the chest in a day, then electrocution maybe six hours, max. Lastly, I think Enel will probably get the remaining 25 people down to five in the next hour. It just won't be the five he expected it to be. And now for some awards. Let's honorably mention Kamakiri. Because even when he was facing death, the only thing he could think about was getting a message to Wiper. The best pair is Nami and Gonfall. We already knew they were badasses, but they had to make sure we knew the extent of it. The best burn was basically the entirety of the Kamakiri Enel interaction. In particular, when Enel straight up called him Kamakiri Kun. So rude. The triumphant moment was Chopper's renewed resolve to become an awesome pirate. The WTF moment was the way the enforcers look and talk. Why are they goats? The lull was at the way beginning of episode 170. The narrator, when explaining to us what happened on the last episode, sort of makes fun of the way everyone ended up lost. The oh snap moment was Zoro obtaining his new physics-defying range attack. 
and he said, I am a cannon, you are a pistol. Oh snap! The best injury was getting electrocuted. It happened a bunch of times, and every time it looked like it hurt. The best fight was Zoro versus Bram. I was tempted to make it Nami and Gonfall versus idiots, but I couldn't take that fight seriously. It's always easy to default to Zoro's battles because they're always so good. So let's give the MVP award to Nami. It's difficult to determine an MVP when everyone's so split up, but while everyone was awesome in their own right, Nami also protected her crewmates. That's all for part three. Inel is stepping up to the plate and elevating the Skypiea arc to a more successful story. I anticipate I'll be watching the next bit of One Piece fairly soon. That'll be episode 174 and 175. So I'll see you then. Bye bye! Similarly, there's this thing called the reject dial, which expels 10 times the impact at your enemy. <laughs> no. <laughs> so even if Wiper used the rejects, uh -huh. meanwhile, another Shandian war warrior, bleh, he gets himself shot, but luckily he defeats Bram. Bram. He gets himself shot, but he successfully defeats Bra, Bra, Bram, Bram. <laughs> The Shandian warriors decide to all split up so they won't get all the what? The Shandian warriors decide to all split up so they won't get all trapped in the same trap again. Too many traps. Nami stays quiet so she's not attacked as well. What 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 was that hand gesture?